white people and a few minorities. Hey, y'all doing good? Yeah. I am Gordon. I'm happy to be out here. Might as well get to know who is in here. How y'all doing? Look like a couple, friends, friends, of course. All right. <laughs> you said that quick. Why? Why just friends? Just met through work. Is this some kind of HR situation? Should I tell somebody? Did he follow you here? <laughs> you both agreed to be here. Good, all right, what kind of work do you guys do? Technical. Huh? Technical consulting. Technical consulting. That's, I, that's white as shit, all right. <laughs> it's very vague technical consulting. What, like, what does that mean? Uh, we teach clients how to do software. Oh, you teach old people how to do shit, all right. <laughs> this is Twitter, all right. Don't say anything racist, all right. <laughs> What's going on here, how y'all doing? Are y'all together? Yes. Married, all right. I was about to say, what the fuck is up with y'all? <laughs> this is the most sentimental crowd ever. We're friends. Oh, we're married. Oh, it's like it's a goddamn Disney movie. All right. How long y'all been married? Uh, Eight months. Eight months. <laughs> Say what? Two weddings. Two weddings. What kind of rich baller shit are you trying to brag about? <laughs> We've been married eight months, but we got married every four months. Uh, <laughs> We're trying to get married three times a year, if possible. <laughs> Hit all the seasons. Why the fuck did y'all have two weddings? Oh, a COVID wedding and then in Germany. At a castle, damn, she bragging, at a castle. <laughs> at a castle, did you, a castle! <laughs> at a drawbridge and everything. It was beautiful. <laughs> Y'all brown as hell. Y'all brown asses had a German wedding with the castle? No one, I'm the only one that finds that strange? All right, I'll go fuck myself. All right, just two brown people like, let's go to a castle in Germany and get married. <laughs> you from Germany? Oh, uh, Guggentag or Volkswagen. <laughs> Does anybody know German in here? Oh, dang, oh, there's a whole bunch of Germans in there. Yeah, yeah, watch how y'all raise your hands. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they did that shit like, yeah. <laughs> I'm single. Anybody else single? All right, y'all say, y'all reluctant like I'm trying to fuck y'all. Relax. <laughs> I just got out of a seven year relationship with a Dominican woman. Yeah, that's a nice way of. <laughs> Did she stab you just now? Ooh, ah! <laughs> Dating a Dominican woman for seven years is a nice way of saying I dated someone with a very big forehead for seven years. <laughs> Muy big cabeza. <laughs> I made her feel cute about her forehead. I used to call it my backboard for kisses. I used to say that. <laughs> I'm on Bumble, Tinder, and Hinge. Anybody else? Three people, that's it? It's got a billion downloads. It's only me and three other people? <laughs> Fuck y'all, all right. I like to tell white people this. White people, please tell your black and brown friends about Bumble, Tinder, and Hinge, because I swear to God, I am the only nigga on these apps. I am swiping through white women like I'm walking through a blizzard, okay? I'm like, hello, is anyone brown out there? Shaniqua, yell out. I don't think I have any success on these dating apps because I don't take pictures the right way. I don't have a good profile picture. I don't do what all the other dudes do. Like white dudes, they figure it out. You know what white dudes do to get pussy online? They take a picture of themselves holding up a fish. <laughs> <laughs> Every white dude has a fish picture. <laughs> they hold up a fish like, <laughs> my name's Hank and this is a halibut. <laughs> I do IT, but I'm also a hunter gatherer as you can see. <laughs> you wanna go get drinks? Are you ladies banging these fish dudes? No. <laughs> Somebody said it, no. I met a dude with a salmon, he's an asshole. I will never see him again. 
Like men and women, we do day naps totally differently from each other. Like for example, like do, ladies, do you even change the mile radius when you go on a day nap? <laughs> oh yeah, one lady said yeah. Ma'am, what do you put your mile radius up to? Five miles. Five miles. <laughs> See that? <laughs> La <laughs> All the men are laughing because like ladies are like, that's nice, five miles, oh, five K. Every man's laughing because every man in this room has put it up to 1,000 miles. <laughs> every man's like, is there a pussy on the moon? I'll go to the moon. I'll get cleared by NASA. I'll bang in zero gravity. <laughs> my, mom, my mom and my grandmother are really trying to help me get single, not, not be single anymore. You know what they're doing? They're actually walking around with me. Like we were walking around in the park. She saw this attractive girl. It's my grandmother. She's older. She doesn't understand. She sees the attractive girl. She says, Gordon, you should holler at her. <laughs> Gordon, go over there, holler at her. And I go, no, grandma. She goes, no, stop it. Don't be dumb. Go holler. She's attractive. I'm going to go, no, grandma. That is cat calling. Women don't like cat calling nowadays. And my grandmother's reply was, bitches these days. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> And that's when I realized that's how my grandmother met my grandfather. <laughs> Wasn't something cute. She was walking down the street. He was like, hey, where you going with that fat ass? <laughs> to raise your family. All right. This man knows a fat ass when he sees one. <laughs> Please put your hands together for Usama Siddiqui, everybody. What's up? I fucking lost my voice last week. My voice was fucking gone. When you lose your voice, every female friend is so supportive, right? Are you OK? <laughs> You need a lozenge, right? And every male friend is like, yo, you lost your voice because you were sucking mad dick. <laughs> Dude, as straight dudes, we got to update the gay jokes. The joke should be, yo, you were sucking mad dick, and it was helping you understand who you are. <laughs> and we're here for you. I just think 2022, we got to support our gay friends more, right? Take it a step further. 2022, if your boy comes out as gay, suck your boy off. <laughs> suck your boy off. Put the cum back in camaraderie, all right? <laughs> Suck your boy off. Some of y'all are Spanish. Put the cum back in compadre, all right? Saquito. Are y'all boys? Prove it, let's go. Come on, <laughs> come on, come on. He was kind of being ironic and he was like, finally. <laughs> Unclenched jaw, it's time. Here's the thing, I grew up homophobic. I grew up Muslim. So when you're Muslim, when you're four years old, some old guy in a beard comes in and he's like, don't like gay people. And he like blows like anti-gay dust in your eyes. And then you're like, oh, it is pretty unnatural. <laughs> all those dudes who teach homophobia in the church and the mosque, they're creepy guys. They're all creepy guys. They come in, they're like, hey, don't like gay people. Okay. <laughs> this hand, the hand rub is the ultimate creepy guy move right here, right? If you ever see a guy doing this and there's no lotion, run. <laughs> He's there to induce trauma. We all had homophobic dads. All of our dads are homophobic. Old black dudes homophobic, right? But they're funny, because when they want to call someone gay, they'll say everything besides the word gay, right? So they'll be like, yo, your friend Jimmy, a little uh, loose in the shoes. <laughs> right, right? <laughs> all I'm saying is the boy plays tambourine. <laughs> Uh, sir, are you saying he's gay? I ain't saying shit. <laughs> but the boy likes to slip and slide. <laughs> I'm not hating, all, all our dads are homophobic. All our dads are, they all say it the same way, right? They're like, your friend's a little. <laughs> Why is this the universal sign for gay? My dad was talking your friend like this. I'm like, dad, do you think that homosexuality is Parkinson's? <laughs> Your friend, you know, Michael J. Cox. <laughs> I mean, dude, my Muslim leader is doing homophobic speeches every Friday, right? But they were doing it in like deep Arabic, okay? So we'd be like, <laughs> I'm like, how are you gonna hate on gay people while sounding like you're sucking a dick, right? <laughs> right, you can't be homophobic and be like, <laughs> Don't tell my mom. Ha ha! Oh, the island! Oh, the island! And I love my dad. I love my mom. You know, immigrant ass mom. Intense, intense, right? White moms. I wish. I wish I had a white mom growing up. White mom chores were cute, right? Hunter, take out the trash, right? And then Hunter's like, Mom, you're a bitch, <laughs> right? Hunter, please. <laughs> Fine, whore, I'll do it. <laughs> but know that you're a slut, mom. 
White mom chores were cute. Immigrant mom chores were like, hey, go fix my business. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I guess I'll put on my work diapers. See what I'm saying? Immigrant moms never say I love you. One time I texted my mom, I love you. Her response, sounds good. <laughs> you feel that, right? One time my brother texted her I love you. She wrote back LOL. Okay. It's a joke. Huh? Who has a mom that can aim the FaceTime correctly when they FaceTime? Zero, right? They got no, no idea what's going on. They have no concept. My mom's like, hello, plop, right? Right here. Hold, hold. Hold up. Mom, it's FaceTime, not left tit time. <laughs> right? having a full conversation with her fucking breast, right? And half of me is like disgusted, and half of me is like, yo, it's been a while. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yo, spring break 91, you know what I'm saying? Like, listen, I'm just like, my mom, my mom an old school, old school bitch, you know. Still beats me to this day, still beats me. Clap, clap it up if your parents whooped your ass growing up. Yeah, 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 okay. <laughs> <laughs> Minorities clapping, white people. You mean like timeouts? <laughs> I mean, I was in my room a lot. Does that count? Okay, your mom whooped your ass, but like my mom whooped my spirit. <laughs> my mom whooped me every day. I was actually born white, like y'all. <laughs> All this is just bruises. <laughs> but yeah, every day. Here's the thing. My mom. You know, it was funny, because when she beat me, you know, she didn't know any English, right? One time she was trying to beat me, I got so mad, I was like, Mom, you can't. <laughs> Swear to God, she was like, don't tell me what I can't do. <laughs> <laughs> That's immigrant shit. My mom is crazy, she's crazy though. All our moms who beat us were crazy, right? One time, I just left my socks on the floor, she was like, hey, Summer, don't leave your socks on the floor. I never should have had you. <laughs> she went from zero to abortion <laughs> in one second. That's a cold, that's a cold woman. But do you care? Do you care your mom beat you? Like, do you give a fuck, really? Eh. My mom would whoop me and then feed me Indian food afterwards. Y'all know Indian food is so good, it kind of undoes child abuse, right? <laughs> My mom would hit me, I'd be like, yo, fuck you, mom. Have one bite of her chicken curry, be like, you know what? She never should have had me. <laughs> I, I get it. That's why I feel bad for white people who got beat, because your cuisine also sucks. Right? <laughs> right? Can you imagine getting hit by your dad and having green bean casserole? Like, <laughs> one bite of green bean casserole, you're like, dad, just molest me again. <laughs> right? like, I love it, I love it, I love it. 90% of y'all laughing, 10% having flashbacks. <laughs> See how right now? It's a lot. I love my dad too, I don't hate my dad. My dad's beautiful, immigrant guy, you know? Full of shit, right? The how much money he didn't have in his pocket story when he came to this country, bullshit, right? My, when I come to this country, only $5 in the pocket. I'm like, how did you leave the airport? <laughs> right, Terminal B to Terminal E is a $10 cab ride, I thought. And next year, Usama, in my pocket, only 50 cent I had on. <laughs> next year, Usama, in my only a piece of paper that said zero. <laughs> then the bullshit continues, and I sell that piece of paper, and I start my own business. <laughs> full of shit, it's full, pure full of shit. And as the money gets smaller, the craziness of their school commute gets wild, right? <laughs> One day, my dad, Usama, every day I run 18 miles to school. <laughs> every day I swim across a pond, two of my friends one time die in the pond. <laughs> I pull out their car case, I bury it before school. I'm like, Grandma, is this true? She's like, he was homeschooled. <laughs> Don't listen to him, he's a little, you know, like, he's a little, little light in the sandal, you know? I love my dad, he's a conservative guy, you know? If we're watching TV and there's a sex scene, he'd change the channel, right? Aladdin, Jasmine going in, he's like, oh shit, fuck, you know? <laughs> Beauty and the Beast coming in, oh no, uh, which I get, beating the beast, that's some weird shit. Because right? as a society, we were all like, yo, fucking our dog is wrong. And then Disney was like, what if he was wearing a tuxedo? <laughs> <laughs> huh? Woof woof, huh? I'm just kidding, y'all are a great crowd. Last show I did was not good. It was all fucking Brits, all British people. Dude, what is it with us when we meet a British person? Why is it so hard for us not to mimic their accent? 
right? Every time, they're like, hello. And we're like, don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> do not, hello! <laughs> how are you? <laughs> and no matter how nice they sound, we reply with Peaky Blinders on meth, right? <laughs> they come in Downton Abbey, how you doing? We're like, how am I doing, innit? <laughs> Do not ride in it. All of our British accents are that guy with the lantern who's like, I'll take you across the river. <laughs> That's all of our British accents. And it's offensive, bro, it's offensive, right? Because when he says hi to me and I go, hello. That's like if I said hi to him and he was like, ding 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 <laughs> Right? But I'm allowed to do it because they pillaged us for 200 years, right? So I fucking get the accent, right? One British guy was like, yeah, so we're even, right? I'm like, even? Are you mento? <laughs> Are you mento? Even? There was no Indian man in 1850 seeing his house burn down, being like, can't wait to say cheerio. You know? <laughs> it is funny how we're allowed to shit in all the white subcultures in America, right? Like British, haha, -ha, right? Irish, fucking LOL. Right? Like, Australians? We have no respect for Australians. <laughs> One time an Australian guy said hi to me, I just replied, kangaroo. <laughs> That's it. He was like, hi. I'm like, kangaroo, dude. <laughs> it is so okay to make fun of Australians. Even he was like, yo, spot on. <laughs> and then there was a smaller Australian in his stomach who was like, yo, spot on. <laughs> so you can do all the white accents. Have a good time. Everyone do the white accents. Do Welsh. Do fucking, uh, you know, North Umbria with a fahookas button. Can we do an Asian accent? Can he do Asian accent? Yeah. Maybe once. Can the white guy do Asian accent? No. Not even. Don't even say the word Chinese, really, right? <laughs> one time I had a coworker, bro. He was drinking some coffee that was too hot. So he was like, oh. He was fired the next day. <laughs> <laughs> the CEO was like, me so appalled, okay? <laughs> We here at Best Buy do not love you long time. Get out of here! I'm a hater, I'm a hater. You listen, I don't think Americans are even good at accents. We're not even good. We'll take Denmark's, like Sweden, Norway. It's all like, oh yeah, of course, yeah. Amazing. It all becomes gay German somehow, right? <laughs> oh, so cool, oh yeah, oh shit. I, I do think brown people were coming up. You know, people do want to fuck us now. <laughs> Everyone besides you, but, but around you, there's a lot of... I'm, sorry, I'm, kidding, I'm kidding, you're great, you're great. Here's the thing, I think the problem with brown sex symbols is that the names are too white sounding, right? Like Dev, Zane. Won't be any real progress until the hot white cheerleaders, like, you know who I wanna fuck? Devakar Nakur Nakurti. I just wanna go behind the bleachers and suck off Bala Subramanian. <laughs> That's progress, now we're getting somewhere, right? You have to get, we didn't have anybody growing up in Hollywood, nobody. I remember 20 years ago, my friend was like, hey, who was your favorite Indian actor in Hollywood? I was like, Antonio Banderas. <laughs> That's all we had. Y'all keep condoms in your wallet still, yeah? No, nah. your voice does, for sure, dude. No. Nah. Here's the thing, I'm, I'm a condom and wallet guy. Listen, it's convenience, it's convenience, dude. My girl's like, no, it's creepy. And I'm like, where else you want us to put it? Wouldn't it be creepier if we were naked and you were like, where's your condom? And I was like, one second, okay? <laughs> <gasps> ah! Creepier, right? Even creepier, no wrapper, just the condom comes out, right? <laughs> There's new shit on the market, not just condoms now. There's a new male birth control pill coming out. Y'all know about this? <laughs> FDA approved. Wait, hold on, hold on. Clap it up if you're a dude and you're gonna take the male birth control pill. Okay, 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 okay. Like two fake male allies. <laughs> These are the kind of guys who are like, babe, my favorite movie is Love Actually. <laughs> no, I promise. I'll take, I'll take the pill, I'll take the pill, okay? I, I am scared, I'm terrified. I've never heard a woman go, yeah, I changed birth controls and it was a smooth transition. <laughs> Ever. It's always like, yeah, I was on Yaz and I switched to ortho tricycline and now I have a unibrow. <laughs> And then I switched to Nordet and I strangled my grandma. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Mood swings. <laughs> I'll do copper IUD. Put the copper IUD up my butt, whatever y'all do. <laughs> Spin the fucker. This is a true story. I was with a girl once putting a condom on. She was like, don't worry, I have a copper IUD. 
I put it in 20 years ago. And I'm like, if I fucked you raw, the STD I'd get would be tetanus. <laughs> 20 year old copper IUD, bro, what does that even look like? You know when you have a handful of pennies, there's always that one green one? <laughs> I mean, she has a Statue of Liberty in her pussy right now. This Mormon section needs to grow up. Ah, oh, what? I think we gotta, we gotta change some of the terms too. Some of the sex terms gotta change, right? Some of the dudes who are like, I got a raging boner. You ever hear that? I got a raging boner. It's like, dude, leave the room, right? <laughs> right? Dude sex terms are too aggressive, right? Female sex terms, way more cute, right? It's like, I'm wet, hee hee, right? <laughs> right? It's cute. It's never like, yo, my pussy's on some hydraulics right now, dude. <laughs> oh my God! It's like Hurricane Katrina down here, Jesus Christ. Somebody call FEMA. <laughs> Dude, sex terms are aggressive, right? Even jacking off is too intense. Can we get some softer jack off terms? I, I want to be like, yo, I got home last night and just started watering my plants. <laughs> and yeah, it was a good harvest, okay? Hi. You ever have a, have a dude friend who's like, I don't jack off anymore, bro, I'm done. That was me. I'm like, I'm done, it's unhealthy, I'm done jacking off. Two days, no jacket off. I was like, should I kill animals? <laughs> Bro, four days, no jacket off. I was like, if I sneeze, I'm gonna come. <laughs> and then some old lady's gonna hear me sneeze, be like, bless you. I'm gonna be like, you have no idea. <laughs> What do, do y'all do more, Instagram or TikTok? Yeah? yeah? That old guy's like, LinkedIn. So <laughs> <laughs> fucking get a job, right? Here, here's the thing, it's Instagram, TikTok, they're different apps, right? Instagram, the comments are more like, hey man, keep working hard, keep hustling, right? TikTok comments, bro, are like, yo, I'm 12 years old, and like, I wish you were dead, right? <laughs> why, why are kids so mean on that app? Worst comment I ever got, bro, I put a video of me doing stand-up. This kid just wrote, terrorist, but also annoying. <laughs> yo. Yo, that, that means the fact that I blow people up, that is not the worst thing about me, right? Bro, fuck this little white 12-year-old kid. Went to his profile, found a comedy video of his, and I wrote, school shooter, but also short. <laughs> yeah, good quick, dude. All right, listen, follow me at Usama Stands Up. Y'all be good. We please put your hands together for my homie, Eagle Win, everybody! Nice. Packed out on a weekday. This is nice. I love stand up. There's a little shit I don't like about stand up. You know what I don't like? I don't like that people use it as a first date. Don't use my shit as a first date. <laughs> it feels like a bitch move on the dude's part, you know? It's like you take a girl to a show where you can't talk for two hours, I make her laugh, and then you fuck? <laughs> It's like, can I put a finger in? Like, I, <laughs> I feel cheated, you know? I usually fuck with first dates. I was messing with one one time, they were sitting in the front, and I asked the girl, I was like, yo, have you kissed him yet? And she said no, and for whatever reason, the crowd got like super hyped, right? Like on some like Jerry Springer shit. Like she was like, no, and the crowd was like, kiss, kiss, kiss. And I ain't gonna lie, like it hyped me up. Like I was like, oh, yeah, you hear him? Y'all gotta kiss. And then they did. Yeah, and then for the rest of the show, the dude was just looking at me like, say fuck, say fuck, say fuck. <laughs> it's weird, dudes use comedy shows like an aphrodisiac, for real. It's strange, it's predatory behavior, for real. <laughs> Niggas be like, she ain't gonna let me hit till she giggle. <laughs> like, what? I see a lot of friend zone dudes at comedy shows, that's big. For real, like it'd be a pair sitting in the front and I'll ask the girl, I'll be like, is that your boyfriend? And she's like, ha, ha, he's my friend. <laughs> and then he's like, yeah, I'm her friend. <laughs> Y'all think a dude could be friends with a girl for real? Or if a dude's friends with a girl, he's just trying to fuck? Yeah, no. <laughs> Look, divided the room immediately. I wouldn't say we're all trying to fuck. I'd say we all would. <laughs> but there's a difference, you know what I mean? Like, I have a girl best friend. I've been best friends with her for over 15 years. That's my nigga. That's my bro. I don't even look at her like that. Yeah. Now, once have I tried to fuck, miss. <laughs> but... 
You know what I mean? Like, if we were hanging out and she was like, Eagle, I'll give you some head, but we can't be friends anymore. I'd be like, well, we had a good room. <laughs> <laughs> Every friendship has its day, right? He's, what's, what's this situation over here? <laughs> He's your coworker. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> you don't trust it? You guys trust it? You don't trust it. <laughs> this is your lady right here, bro? Yeah. How long y'all been together? Uh, we've been married for like a little over a year. Man. Aww. <laughs> Lonely ass crowd. <laughs> I'm in a weird place. I'm heartbroken right now, bro. You know, when you're heartbroken, you start hating on people's happiness. Like, you see a couple kissing you, like, I hope y'all both got mouth herpes. <laughs> I'm fucking sad. I had to break up with this girl. I was super in love with her, but she was just too toxic, you know? Like, she's always accusing me of cheating. And it's like, I was, but be positive. <laughs> That's a joke. That's a joke. A true joke. A, true, a very true joke. It's an old joke, though. You know what the update is? The update is I'm in a new relationship, and uh, my girl is bi. Anybody in this room got a bisexual girlfriend? No? There's one dude right here in the corner. Bro, y'all have threesomes? No. No, no, you don't. No, you don't. Because that's not real, nigga. <laughs> That is not what the fuck it is. We are believers, men. That's what we are. We are positive people, right? Right? Ladies, I don't know if y'all know that. We're the most positive people on earth, men. Every night we walk out, we're like, everything's gonna happen. It's gonna be great. And then nothing happens. We're like, tomorrow, another day. Like, we're like we fucking believe. We are positive fucking people. My girl is bi, she is, she is gorgeous, highly attractive. Best looking person I've ever seen. And I like to think I'm attractive. And the first date, she was like, I'm bi. And I was like, we about to fuck the world. <laughs> I was pointing at people in the restaurant, you gonna get it, you gonna get it, you gonna get it. <laughs> and that's not the case, that's not what's happening at all. All having a bisexual girlfriend does, you just worry about double the people. <laughs> Because we're in an open relationship. We're in an open relationship. I cannot do monogamy. And uh, so we're non-monogamous. And she told me from jump, she was like, listen, I don't have to do monogamy, but just so you know, if we don't do monogamy, that means I'm also going to be fucking girls. And I ain't going to lie. At first, I very much responded like a dude. Like, I was like, I don't care. They don't got no real dick. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck them. You just going to come back home to daddy. <laughs> All right? I was feeling good. I was feeling good. And then I fell in love with her. And I was like, why has this bitch got so many friends? <laughs> Because women, y'all are different with y'all friends than us. Y'all hang out real weird. Y'all do suspect shit that we don't do. You know what I mean? You, you know you hang out different. Like, I was on FaceTime with my girl, and her friend ran through the background, butt ass naked. And I was like, ew! And she was like, what, babe? That's just how girls hang out. And I called my sisters. I called my sisters. I was like, yo, is this true? They were like, ah, sometimes you gotta see a titty. I was like, all right. Hey, I see the girls in the room. Psh, saw your pussy last night, bitch. <laughs> Y'all are enjoying the joke. I get it. I get it. Women are different, and that's fine. I have no problem with people being different. But ladies, you have to understand that's also bullshit, right? Because my girl's never gonna FaceTime me, and I'm playing 2K with my nigga, and his dick is out. Like, right? <laughs> what, babe? How niggas hang out? <laughs> Anybody, anybody here actually gay? Any gay dudes in the room? You lesbians? All right. Any gay dudes in the room? No? Just doing the numbers. Somebody in this room is lying right now. If somebody just pulled a dick out of their mouth like I would never. Come out whenever you want to come out, you know? One of my friends, he just came out, and I always knew he was gay when we were growing up, but I ain't say nothing because he could fight. <laughs> I wanted to say something. He was just too gangster, you know what I mean? Like, all my friends were tough, but he was the toughest one. 
And it's weird, because I try to talk to them about it. Like, I'd be like, yo, you think Xavier, hmm. <laughs> They'd be like, man, you gonna say something? And I was like, nah, you right, you right. <laughs> He's too gangster. It was weird, because, you know, he was gangster and flamboyant, which is like a strange mix. You know what I mean? Like, he beat somebody up, and then he'd be like, girl, let's go get some pussy. <laughs> I don't think that's what he wants. <laughs> When he came out, I called him to check on him. I was like, hey, man, how you holding up? He's like, honestly, you guys are the best friends I could ask for. Yeah. He's like, you're showing me so much love and support. I can't wait for y'all to meet my boyfriend. I was like, that's beautiful. I was like, just so you know, I always knew you were gay. And he was like, what? And I was like, nothing. I'm so sorry. <laughs> He's like, nah, you said you always knew I was gay. I was like, yeah, you were different. He's like, well, I wasn't gay. I was like, so what happened? He's like, I just met somebody and fell in love. I've met a lot of amazing men in my life. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, never have I met someone so dope. <laughs> never have I been to the bar like, wait, you like the Knicks too? Oh! <laughs> I just don't think that's how it works. I don't know. <laughs> for real, for real. Like, I don't like, like white protesters. I don't like them. I know, you're our ally, or whatever. <laughs> I don't care. They're, they're just too aggressive. Like, they confuse me, you know what I mean? Like, I start rooting for the wrong team by accident. You know what I mean? Like, they'll spit on the cop, and I'll be like, hmm, hmm, hmm. <laughs> I'll lean in, like, officer, I wouldn't take that. <laughs> like, I don't like liberal white people. Uh, yeah, I figured that would silence the room. <laughs> I don't. I like my white conservative. That's my shit. <laughs> like a nice red hat. Mm. <laughs> you know what it is? Liberal white people are just as racist as conservative white people. The only difference is they play these like Jedi mind tricks on you where you can't call them out for it. Conservative is real easy to call out. You're like, hey man, that was kind of racist. They're like, I know you. <laughs> you know who the fuck you are. <laughs> Liberal's impossible to call out. You like, hey man, that was kind of racist. They're like, but your life matters. <laughs> and you're like, mm, and still hurt my feelings. <laughs> and they're like, like my feet hurt from marching for you. <laughs> I'm enjoying watching the black people laugh at this. <laughs> While all the white people go, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> I've learned a lot from having gay friends. I really have. Like, for instance, uh, I'm black. I know I look like Hawaiian lesbian, but I'm black. <laughs> um, <laughs> fuck you guys for laughing that hard at that. I mean, it's very much like a throwaway, but all right. I thought we were friends. All right. <laughs> I am. I'm black. And when you black, sometimes white people say racist shit to you, and you call them out on it, and what's the go-to? They're like, buddy, I can't be racist. I've got black friends, right? And you're like, hmm, fuck you. <laughs> but now I've got gay friends, and touche, white people. <laughs> it's a solid fucking argument, huh? Sorry for ever doubting you. <laughs> this is the real reason. This, this is the real reason I don't like liberal white people. And this is gonna be the hardest reason to say to your smiling white faces. <laughs> okay, here we go. <laughs> I, th <laughs> I think liberal white people are the dumber whites. <laughs> I'm not saying worse, okay? I'm not saying worse, okay? Conservative white people are definitely worse people, for sure. But just because you're a bad person doesn't mean you're dumb. They have their smart moments. They're kind of smart. Liberal white people, great human beings. Huge hearts, huge. <laughs> huge hearts. Tiny brains. <laughs> yeah, they just keep doing things they think are super progressive, but it really just sets everybody back like 50 years. Like, for instance, stop calling us people of color. You're just calling us colored again. <laughs> You can't just add two words and make everything better. You can't be like, you're not a nigga, you're a person of nigga. <laughs> I 
How are you guys doing? <laughs> you know, you know what I was thinking about? That's fake. You know, like our response. You guys ever realize that we all just always say good when somebody asks how we doing? It's like an autopilot thing. Right? You ever have somebody ask how you're doing, you give them the auto response, and then they ask again, but care? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, they're like, how you doing? You're like, I'm good, I'm chilling. No, how are you? <laughs> and you like, I don't know, man, I'm going to <laughs> We're not ready, we're not ready to be cared about, nigga, it's a lot. I don't even know how to care, you know what I mean? My boy, my boy was depressed the other day, right? He posted about it on social media that he was depressed. And I hit him up. I hit him up. I was like, you know what? Fuck toxic masculinity. Women keep on saying we don't check on each other as men. I'm a fucking check on him. I'm a care about another man in my life. I'm a fucking care about his feelings. So I reached out and I was like, bro, you could vent to me. You could tell me everything. Here's the problem. Ladies, y'all didn't tell us what to do next. Because I hit the nigga up. I hit him up. I was like, yo, bro, I care about you. I don't want you to do nothing crazy, man. You can talk to me. And he opened up. He was vulnerable. And I was excited. I was like, oh, shit, it's working. And he was like, da-da-da-da, da-da-da-da, da 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 just pouring his heart out. And I was like, yo, that shit's crazy. <laughs> I fucked too much. I fucked too much. I have fucked too much in my life. Seriously. I went, I went to, uh, <laughs> this is fun. I, went to, <laughs> I can't wait to see how y'all respond to this. I went to SAA. Anybody ever been to SAA? Uh -uh. You guys know what SAA is? Uh. It's Sex, Ad Sex Addicts Anonymous. Uh. It's a real thing. Um, yeah, I went. Any, anybody here ever been to AA? Uh -huh. Somebody said yeah, I heard it yeah. <laughs> Alcoholism is crazy. You, you've definitely been to AA, right? Okay. I didn't mean it like that. They're hyping it up. <laughs> but you've been to AA, so you know in AA, what is it? It's a community, right? Yeah. I don't know if y'all know what this means, but it means that everybody in the group exchanges info to some extent and can lean on each other when things are tough. That's a phenomenal idea for AA. Not a great idea for sex addicts and all you know what I mean? Like, yeah. like oh, Eagle, I'm, I'm just feeling so horny. Really, would you wear it? Like, it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's just. I've been very militant on stage where I made all the liberal white people feel bad. Um, it's like a thing for me. I don't know why. When I get on stage, I just get real Malcolm X -y, for real. It's like, make them laugh and make them feel bad. In my real life, I'm not militant at all, for real. I'm really not. Um, you know what it is? I don't believe in talking to white people about real topics in real life. Like on stage, fuck yeah, because I can't talk back. <laughs> but in my real life, no, because white people are extremists now. There's no more chill white people. You can't have a calm conversation with a white person. For real. Like, you'll be like, cops are killing us. And they'll fly on the floor. They'll be like, I can't believe it. You're like, nigga, get up. I don't care that much. <laughs> or you're like, cops are killing us. And they're like, good. And you're like, well, I didn't want that either. So I keep it light when I talk to white people. Keep it fun, you know? Here's a fun argument me and all my white friends have been having for years. All my white friends think Bob Dylan is the greatest lyricist of all time. <laughs> Nothing in life infuriates me more. You could be like, black lives don't matter and Bob Dylan's great. And I'll be like, what was the second thing you said? <laughs> it upsets me so much. Recently, I was arguing with one of my white friends. He's like, I'm gonna just put you on to some Bob Dylan. And I was like, all right, bet, do it. He sucks. And I don't know if he sucks. I've never heard him before. <laughs> all right? And I listened to him, and... Nah, yeah, he's good. <laughs> he's great. He's the best ever. Fuck you guys. I don't care. Can I read you my favorite Bob Dylan? Are you a Bob Dylan fan? Yeah. Oh, you're gonna love this. Can I read you my favorite Bob Dylan lyrics? All right, I'm gonna read this, and I'm gonna fucking leave. <laughs> all right, here we go. Said, uh, he said, no compass comes with this life, just eyes. So to map it out, you must look inside. Sure, books can guide you, but your heart defines. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah, that's Jay-Z. Fuck Bob Dylan. <laughs> you guys have been great. My name's Eagle Wet. Thank you so much. Bye. In the room and everybody. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, guys. I appreciate that.
The comment I get on TikTok the most is that I look like an unhealthy Pete Davidson. <laughs> Every time it says uh, unhealthy, they specify that. I'm like, just say Pete Davidson, you know? Like, it's not like he's the beacon of health and wellness, but I'll take it. Wherever I go, people ask me my pronouns, which is fair. I look like pronouns. I get it. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. And pronouns are very important, but they're not important to me personally. Like, the only time I care about pronouns is if I'm, if I'm having sex with my girlfriend, I like it when she uses male pronouns on me, but that feels like a bit of an overshare for someone I just met at a baby shower. You know what I mean? <laughs> I went to a baby shower the other day. I got sat next to this woman. She was like, hi, I'm Kelly, she, her. And I was like, oh, hey, Kelly, um, I'm Emma. I don't really care. I'd, you know, I guess unless I'm having sex with my girlfriend, you know, then I, then I care. Wait, where are you going, Kelly? My, room, my, where are you? my friend was like, what'd you say to my cousin, Emma? I'm like, she started it. She started it. My girlfriend is Puerto Rican. Any Puerto Ricans? Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. So I want to support that, right? So this is what I've been trying to do. I learned how to cook plantains, plantains, yeah. I learned, I, I bought a giant Puerto Rican flag, and then whenever she comes over, I play Daddy Yankee. <laughs> That's the big one, I play it. But this is the issue, she doesn't appreciate it. The other day, she comes over, I'm playing Daddy Yankee, cooking plantains, waving a little Puerto Rican flag. I'm doing all these things at once, trying so hard. She walks in, looks at me, and goes, okay, Emma, first of all, I'm Mexican, okay? Like, <laughs> ugh. Fucking white people! I don't know if any of you guys are in interracial relationships, but when she gets mad at me, she hides my sunscreen. <laughs> I don't know what to do. I'm trapped in the house. Trapped in the house! She's tall, she's Mexican, very feminine. We kind of look like we're from the future. And I was having dental problems for two months. I have a fake tooth and it had popped out. And before I got the implant, I was walking around missing a front tooth. So for those two months, it looked like the future did not go well for one of us. <laughs> I was stumbling back like, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> don't buy Doja coin, it's rough out there. <laughs> My tooth, when it popped out, the timing was perfect. Cause people would ask me what happened and I could just go, oh, it was the vaccine. Yeah, it got me. <laughs> The needle hit my arm and it just popped out. <laughs> when my girlfriend and I go out to eat and they clock us as gay and interracial, sometimes they get too supportive. I can see them just stressing because they're like, shit, this Yelp review could take us down. <laughs> <sighs> we were at a place the other day and we were there an hour early. And before I could say to the guy like, hey dude, we're an hour early, don't even worry about it. He just starts getting wound up. He's like, oh yeah, yeah. Woo! Yes, this is this. This is so great. We just, I love to see it. I do, I do. Yes, yes, um, technically we're full, but, 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 don't worry about it. We'll go find some straight white people. We'll kill them. Get in here. Yeah, come on, come on. Yeah. I quit smoking cigarettes a while ago, and you know what I realized? I wasn't addicted to the nicotine. I was addicted to the gossiping opportunity. I love taking a moment in my day to smoke a cigarette with someone else and then talk about other people. You're already doing a toxic thing, so it's more likely you'll have a toxic conversation. I didn't even have to like the person I was smoking with. I would have talked shit about other people. I probably would have smoked a cigarette with Sarah Palin. Two puffs in, I would have been like, Hillary is a bitch, you're right, yeah. <laughs> She's a bitch, I can see it. The more unhealthy the activity, the quicker the friendship bond is formed too. Like, it's a sad truth of it. The quicker it'll go away, but the quicker it's formed, like cocaine, You'll go into the bathroom with a serial killer like, we gotta start a business. <laughs> yeah, me and you do, t-shirts, they're gonna be big. Yeah. What is it about Coke that makes people so entrepreneurial? What is it? Did you know they updated the terminology from ADD to ADHD? Yeah, did you know that? You did, okay, because usually people in the community don't know, but it feels like people outside of the community did know that. Like, I had no idea they updated that terminology. And then my sister called and told me a couple weeks ago, she was like, there's no more ADD, it's all ADHD. And I was like, how the fuck, how was I supposed to know that? <laughs> and then she goes, I don't know, Emma, pay attention. I was like, ooh, ooh, cold, cold. 
Why would they change the name of something that represents a group of people that has a hard time following along? Why would they do that? I got all turbed up about it, like, I'm gonna get to the bottom of this. Went online, probably two minutes in, I was looking at a lasagna recipe, like, yeah, yeah. huh. My sister was like, what'd you find? I'm like, you can put ricotta cheese, ah! <laughs> when I was diagnosed with ADD, they were diagnosing any kid with a behavioral problem as ADD. Like, there was this kid in my class, and at recess, he would hump trees. <laughs> hump trees, and based on that alone, the teachers were like, ADD. <laughs> That's what that is, ADD. And I remember watching him hump a tree and being like, yeah, end something else, right? <laughs> Let's dig a little deeper, you know? I have ADD, I can't concentrate. He's sexually attracted to foliage. <laughs> I was in special ed, but my elementary school was so small, I was the only one in special ed. So they didn't call it special ed, they called it Emma's room. <laughs> I was cocky about it, too. I'm like, time to go to my room. <laughs> I got to high school. They're like, Emma, you're going to be put in something called special ed. And I was like, well, why is it named after Ed? Like, why does he get everything? Why, why isn't it just Ed's room? Like, what about that I'm in there now, too? And they're like, stop right there. But we're just going to tell you, you're going to the right place, okay? Like, you're meant to be here. Yeah. Fine. It's nice you guys came to a comedy show. Whenever I get to pick the entertainment, I just want to watch Law & Order Special Victims Unit. I'm obsessed with that show, and I feel like the more conscious I get of how convoluted and screwed up the justice system is, the more I watch Law & Order Special Victims Unit to fantasize that it can be simple, right and wrong, dun dun. <laughs> but I do think it's weird they call it Special Victims Unit because aren't all victims special? <laughs> like, could you imagine being the victim of a stabbing and you go in to report it at Special Victims Unit and they're like, wrong unit. <laughs> this is for special victims? It looks like you just got stabbed. And you're like, well, I was stabbed by my uncle. And they're like, all right, was it with his dick? No, down the hall. Get out of here, get out. No semen, no service. You're not getting in. Yeah, it's participation trophy culture. How weird is it the executive producer of that show is named Dick Wolf? Dick Wolf, that's insane. I think if a woman had the equivalent name, people would have noticed it a long time ago. And been like, we're getting trolled. Could you imagine if they were like, from executive producer, Volva Fox. You'd be like, mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, that feels weird, feels weird. Okay, I can't look at you guys when I say this next thing. It's too much. Over the pandemic, I became one of those people who comments on porn videos. <laughs> it's too much. If you're ever wondering, who comments on these videos? <laughs> I comments. I comments. Before my girlfriend knew I was in the porn commenting community. <laughs> she was like, can you believe some people actually think real people comment on these videos? <laughs> Obviously it's all robots just trying to get people to go over to their page. And I was staring out the window of an Uber like, it's not all robots. <laughs> just a hunch. Maybe some people quit smoking and they're trying to meet like-minded individuals. We don't know. We don't know. I comment on the video if the title of the video doesn't match up with the content of the video. It's where I draw the line as a human being. I was watching one the other day, it was titled, Verbal Wife Gets Banged Out by Neighbor. But she said nothing, so I had to say something. You know what I mean? <laughs> Not on my watch. Took it to the comments, I was like, hey guys, it's clickbait. Repeat clickbait, if you need a verbal woman, go over to Alabama Housewife on the next page. Boom. <laughs> She's a star. I thought this was all for nothing, and then this guy commented on my comment. I was walking into therapy. <laughs> Woo! I was wa is, was it you? <laughs> I was walking into therapy. I got this alert on my phone, bing, bing. I check it. I'm like, <gasps> I told my therapist right away. I was like, hold on, Kim, this is critical. <laughs> he commented, he goes, thank you so much. It was my anniversary with my wife. I had 10 minutes to come and get ready for dinner. And if it wasn't for you, I would have wasted time on this video. But because of you, <laughs> 
I went over to Alabama Housewife. I came quickly. You saved my anniversary. He said that. Thanks. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Thanks. I really appreciate that. Thank you. Almost on cue, my therapist was like, Emma, do you ever do anything for other people? And I was like, you have no idea. Okay. I'm out here every day commenting, patrolling, putting work into it. My mom gave me comedy advice the other day. She was like, you need to talk about something that's universal and relatable to everybody. Something that transcends race and class and gender and will bring Americans together around a unifying topic. And I was like, sure, what do you think? And she goes, how about the fact that your father is an asshole? Something like that. <laughs> Everybody knows an asshole. I've been dog sitting for my mom for the past five days and I thought it would be fine, except I'm not allowed to have a dog in my building. So I made a fake service animal certificate. It's only five days, I thought what could go wrong? The issue is the dog isn't trained, so a lot has gone wrong. <laughs> A lot. I said it like a true non-dog owner. Like, what could go wrong? Everything went wrong. <laughs> saying this dog is trained would be like someone on a dating app saying they live in a gated community, but they're in prison. It's like that much of a stretch. Like, <laughs> big stretch. I made a fake certificate. I bought a printer and a laminator, and it just says service dog on it, okay? In case I run into my landlord. So I ran into him, and he was like, Emma, that better be a service dog. And as I'm taking out my certificate, the dog starts humping my leg. <laughs> like, aggressively humping my leg. And I was about to tell him the truth, but then I just doubled down. It was like, and uh, <clears throat> this is the service I need. How about that? <laughs> How about mental health is complicated, okay? And if the dog's not humping my leg, my anxiety goes through the roof. This is what does it for me. I learned about it on TikTok, okay? Back off. Your psychiatrist doesn't prescribe dog humping. Get a new one. <laughs> Back in high school, I was very depressed. And I remember trying to talk to my mom about it, but she was so uptight. Like, I remember coming home one time and telling her, like, Mom, I can't take it anymore. I'm going to kill myself. And she went, <gasps> not in the house. <laughs> huh? Not in the house. I have book club in the house. And then because I said that, I had to go to this inpatient rehab center. This is why, like, even in the darkest of times, if you look around, it can be pretty amusing. I had to go to this... <laughs> that part wasn't a joke, you fucking monsters. I was like, even in the darkest of times, you know, look around, it can be amusing, and you're like... <laughs> oh, they're also a loser. <laughs> it's all about perspective, you know. Okay. You have great teeth. Ever since I started having dental problems, I noticed people's teeth, and it's a bad thing to compliment because it makes everyone self-conscious, but good job. <laughs> so, even when you're, I don't remember what the fuck I was talking about. <laughs> even the darkest of times, fucking looking around, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, yes, as I was saying. But I, but I wasn't talking about ADD. Now you're just yelling out things I have. You're like, depression and anxiety, <laughs> potentially bipolar, addiction. <laughs> so, threatening to kill myself, even in the darkest of times, yada, yada, yada. I had to go to this inpatient rehab center. I'm in there for threatening to kill myself. I had a roommate there who was in there for threatening to kill somebody else. <laughs> I was like, who is this lazy admissions person? <laughs> Just seeing the two of us like, ooh, mutual interest, match them up, match them up. They'll be finishing each other's sentences. She had threatened to kill someone and she had multiple personality disorder, which I wanted to be sensitive to, but I didn't know how. So every night I'd be like, uh, good night, everybody, I don't know. <laughs> <sighs> One of you guys snores, I don't know, which, which one of you? I miss 90s boy bands, even in sync, I miss them. Boy bands now are too perfect. Every member can sing, every member can dance, they're all cute. I miss the 90s, where it was like one member could sing, one member could dance, one member was cute. And then there were the other two. Who were these other two? Wild cards, we didn't know what was going on. The ages now are all like 17. In the 90s, it was like 17, 18, 53, 12. And you're like, who's that 53-year-old with the kids? 
Girl groups never had that. Could you imagine if you were watching the Spice Girls? Like, what Spice Girl is that? <laughs> is that somebody's aunt or something? <laughs> she's tracking her steps, I can tell. She's counting steps. She's counting her steps. Who is it? It's Old Spice, that's who it is, Old Spice. <laughs> Every time my mom leaves me a voicemail, she identifies herself in the message. Every message starts like this. She goes, it's your mother. <laughs> like I would ever get a message from my own mom and be like, who is this? I had to ask her like, mom, who do you think I'm talking to that would be calling me up? Like, hey, I was looking at pictures of you in the tub as a baby. <laughs> Cute, call me back immediately. It's Rodrigo, your landlord. <laughs> Rent the zoo, you and your dog are weird. All right, thanks a lot guys. Have a great rest of your show. Please put your hands together for the one, the only, John Johnson, everybody! Um, just in case you didn't know, uh, I grew up in Louisiana. No. <laughs> Anytime I tell people at a party or at a show that I grew up in Louisiana, they're like, oh my God, I love New Orleans. I'm like, yeah, it's not where I said. <laughs> I mean, and they're not wrong, New Orleans is the best part. The problem is that there's a whole state around that city, you know what I mean? Like, New Orleans to Louisiana is like if you had the most beautiful blue eye, but your whole face was fucked up. Like, <laughs> I'm embarrassed to admit it now, but when I was really little, I thought that black people could see the future. I did, I just thought we had powers like that. Because when I was little, you know, when you don't have the best money situation, you usually don't have the best living situation. So the neighborhood I was in, there'd be like a, a fight constantly every other night. Once in a while, there'd be a shooting. And before any of it ever went down, outside of the window in my home, I could hear somebody go, I'm finna go to jail tonight. And then they would. And I was like, how did he know? That is incredible. When do my powers kick in? This is astounding. Um, I've lived in New York now for like six years, about. And who, who here lives in New York? Okay, so, you know, whether you're here and you live here, or you're just visiting, I think we can all agree that now New York is too dirty. Like, this is a level that's unprecedented. This is chaos now. This doesn't make any sense anymore. Like, and look, you're only here, you only live in New York for one of two reasons. Either you were born here and no other place compares, maybe you've tried to live somewhere else and it just doesn't mesh for you, or you moved here to be the best at something. You know, you have a dream, there's something that you wanna do, but I still believe that all of us can be the best designer, the best actor, the, the best of anything without a rat being right there. Like, <laughs> How is that part of the struggle? How does that help us in the grind? That doesn't do anything. It's just depressing. This is too much. We've made them too, we've, we've actually ruined rats with how dirty we've made New York. We've made the rats too fat. You realize they're fat now, because what happened when the pandemic hit? What happened? We started outdoor dining and people loved it. They're like, oh my God, it's so European. <laughs> it's so chic. This is amazing. And then, you know, no one loved it more than the rats. <laughs> because the rats, now you realize rats used to have to scrounge for their food. And now they're like, Frankie's closed at 11 and that's good Italian. So like, we might as well just wait for a little bit. They talk about food the way we talk about food now because we've left so much food dropped in the street. I was walking down the street and I stepped next to a rat. I didn't see it, it we surprised each other. All right. <laughs> I planted my foot next to the rat and then when, when, when we saw each other, we both, I'm not proud of my reaction, but like, <laughs> I, I actually know I'll never be able to protect a woman by how I lifted my leg when I saw the rat, because it was just, the toe was too pointed. Like, what does this do? This doesn't get me further away. I'm just as far away with this as I am with this. 
but this felt more natural. Like if it was gonna bite anything, I wanted it to be ass. <laughs> So I, I do this and I scream, right? And then the rat sees me and it tries to run and it genuinely can't. The rat got a running start and immediately was like, oh, oh, uh-uh, mm-mm, no, no, you gonna have to kill me because I don't know what I just pulled messing with you. This is too much. This is, we've made New York a little too hard now. Why this hard? Why does the setting have to be on extra hard? Because <laughs> you can admit it. You can admit it to me. We're family. When you're walking down the street and you see a homeless person screaming at the top of their lungs, isn't it scary that when they're screaming, they're not wrong? <laughs> That's pretty jarring, isn't it? I was walking down the street, homeless dude screaming at the top of his lungs, but he was like, the bank's rigged everything and there's poison in some of the food. I'm like, he's making good points. Like, <laughs> let's not discount what the man is saying. I've, I've had my own little like awkward encounters with people and everything, you know? Like I remember my freshman year of college, I really wanted to reinvent myself. Because in high school, I was just like this skinny, nerdy kid and like never really had a lot of confidence or anything. And I went to a, a school where no one knew me. So I was like, okay, this is gonna be, I'm gonna be a new guy. I'm gonna be suave. <laughs> and I remember I had, I had classes with this, uh, with this one woman that was like beautiful. So I was like, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna ask her out, right? That's what the old me would never do. I'd be too scared. And so I remember I, just on a random day after class, I started walking up to her. And I have nothing to go on, by the way. Like, we don't, we didn't meet at orientation. We just take two classes together where I sit behind her. So there's nothing to start with. I can't just walk up like, I've been watching you. <laughs> <laughs> and I like what I see. <laughs> so then I'm just like, even as I'm walking up to her, I'm like, what am I doing? <laughs> And I remember I tapped her on the shoulder and she turned around and, and I went to just start speaking. I just like, it's, it starts coming out. I was like, hey, my name is John. And as I go to speak, I can feel a yawn coming. <laughs> and that's not good. Like, you're not gonna entice anyone to have a good time with you when you open with a yawn. And so, so I just, am, I'm just shoving it down. I'm like clenching and I'm shoving the yawn down as hard as I can, I'm pushing it down. And I actually beat the yawn which is an incredible feeling. When you beat a sneeze, a cough, a yawn, when you need to in a social situation, you feel like a god. <laughs> I was talking shit to my own body. I was like, yeah, that's right, breathing ass bitch. <laughs> you breathe when I tell you to breathe, oh, sucking air ass punk. <laughs> Look at you trying to breathe looking stupid. <laughs> And so, so I beat the yawn and I just start talking. I'm like, hey, we have a couple classes together and I don't, I don't know what your situation is, but if you would like to do something this week, I'd love to take you out on set. And as I go to say Saturday, I can feel the yawn coming back. <laughs> but this yawn is different. This is the one that opens your mouth for you. You know what I'm talking about? Those strong yawns that like unclench your jaw and everything. And so then I'm just like, if you would want to do something on the week, I'd love to take you out on Saturday. <laughs> And now because I've tried to talk through the yawn and I haven't done much talking, it sounds like how I talk sometimes. <laughs> and so then also the, the yawn was so powerful. You ever get that tear that comes and you're like, I actually had the tear roll it. I was like, Saturday! <laughs> and we stared at each other for a second and then I just walked away. I was like, oh. There's no saving it. It's fine. It's okay. <laughs> I remember when I was uh, little, my mom worked at the library, and <laughs> there, was, there was this after-school program she would do, and so she would just pick me up after school sometimes, and I would go with her. And so for the time that I was in that age group, that was just what I did. 
every day. And I, I met this kid, and he would always sit by himself, and then he was gone for quite a while, and when I started to see him again, I was like, I'll just, I'll, I'll sit with him because in my mind, I know what it's like to be weird, and I know what it's like to be alone. I'm like an only child, and I've always been odd. And so, <laughs> to me, no one should be alone unless they want to be. So I went to sit with him just to let him know if he wanted to talk to someone, I was here. He didn't have to talk to me, but he, he finally had an option, right? And sometimes something happens to a person where if, if they're over it, like they're genuinely over it, but you can't imagine yourself being over it, you can't imagine them being over it. Does that make sense what I'm saying? It, it's why, like, if I tell you my dad passed away, you're like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I'm so, so sorry. Because you're imagining what it would be like if your dad passed away. You're putting yourself in my shoes. It's why if I tell you that my great-granddad passed away, you're like, oh, okay. <laughs> I mean, that sounds like what's supposed to happen. So. <laughs> Any other facts you want to tell me? <laughs> and so I remember I started talking to him because I would... I was curious about him and everything, and we were the thing we were doing that day was we were putting together a bridge with popsicle sticks. And so we would glue the bridges together, and whoever had the strongest bridge at the end of the you know, day would, would win, like their little team would win, and I was on a team with him. And I remember asking him you know, his name, asking him if we were in the same grade, because I thought that we were, and he's like, yeah, I'm in the... I'm in the sixth grade too. I was like, oh, yeah, man. me too, man. And you know, we're putting the popsicles on. And I asked him, I was like, I, I thought you moved away or something because I used to see you all the time and then I didn't see you for a whole year. And without missing a beat, he just keeps putting the popsicles on the bridge, gluing them, doing his work. And he's like, nah, I didn't move away. I just got kidnapped. <laughs> And I was like, what? <laughs> He's like, oh, you didn't hear me? I got kidnapped. He's <laughs> like, are you, are you okay? <laughs> and without missing a beat, he just goes, yeah, I'm back, so it's all good. <laughs> He's like, if you're good, I'm good, okay. <laughs> oh. That's the thing. Sometimes you're genuinely over something, sometimes you're not. Like, I think just as black guys, we gotta cry more. You know, just let it out sometimes, for real, because we, we don't. You're always too tough at everything, and there's some things you can't out-tough in life, and so when you finally break down and cry, we have no practice. So it's the most unrecognizable sound that could come out of a human. That's why nobody rushes to help us. It doesn't sound like crying when we do it. Because let's say something happens, something genuinely happens where no one will blame you for crying. Let's say your dad does pass away and it's the saddest day of your life and you, you don't know how you're gonna move on, you don't know what you're gonna do about it, but instead of just crying, when it's appropriate, when everyone would understand, when people would have your back, you don't you just shove it down, you try to be strong at the funeral, you're shaking hands, you shove it down, you're shaking hands and you're shoving it down, you're pushing it, you're pushing it, and then you're pushing it, and then years later, <laughs> somebody just asks you how your day is. <laughs> and you're like, <laughs> People come running like, is that an alarm? What, what was that? Someone hurts you. Someone does something that genuinely hurts you in a big way. Maybe you have a breakup. Maybe you feel betrayed by a friend. Something happens. And instead of just opening up and having a cry about it, like, no, you're too tough. You just, oh, you just try, to, try to like work out through it try to fuck through it, whatever it is, just so you don't have to let that out and cry. And then one day, 
a puppy licks your hand. <laughs> and you're like, No one even rushes to help you because they're like, so clearly he needs an exorcism because something, <laughs> there's something in there. I've never heard that sound before. It's like there were, there were a lot of, uh, lot of peaceful protests in 2020. And there were, there were a couple that weren't. I think enough time has passed that we could admit that it's like, no, nah, they looted. That's, <laughs> that's just, that uh, Target didn't do anything. <laughs> Nah, they, they, they want that stuff that was in there. That's, that's all that happened. And this guy, this guy that I know, during one of the protests, like some loot broke out and he looted, but I don't, I don't know if he panicked. I don't, I don't know what happened, but all he looted was a, a rabbit from a pet smart. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, what? <laughs> You almost can't be mad at it. It's a little heartwarming. <laughs> but then he managed to get a sick rabbit. So this, this rabbit, sick as hell, got all types of health problems. So he been in and out of the vet for the past two years. This man looted himself $7,000 into debt. <laughs> Does anyone here believe in God? It is kind of weird that it's like a resounding no now. Like, like I've, I'm always worried about when the masses have an opinion. And it's like, clearly when everybody believed in God, things were not going well. Like, they were, they were not doing the right thing. But now I'm like, oof, everyone saying no also feels a little off. <laughs> you know, because this is a big bet. Like, if God's real, we're, we're really laying out all the chips. <laughs> This is funny. I was I was thinking. I've thought a lot about God in the in the last three years and everything. And okay, this is a long walk, but just roll with me for a second. All right. <laughs> so, if there's a God, if there's a limitless being whose knowledge and power and understanding is bigger than anything that we could ever imagine, that that we come from, that we're made in the image of, that it, the, the limitlessness doesn't just apply to time. It applies to like every des describable metric. So, you know, God has no gender. God has no um, way of tying God down to earthly things or even in, in speech, right? And if this limitless being has seen the entire story, has seen everything, knows everything from beginning to end of how everything will go, everything that will happen, everything that has happened, everything that might happen, then maybe God in that um, limitless power chooses to tip scales at times and punish people for bad things or, or move lives in a specific way. And maybe if you know the whole story, you don't have to think or act in a linear way. We behave linear because time is always moving forward and it's all we know. So if someone does something bad to me and then I take revenge on them, it all makes sense to the people you tell the story to because something happened and there was a reaction. But if you know the entire story, maybe it doesn't matter when the thing happens. You know, Maybe something bad happens to someone, but they're like an asshole anyway. So you're like, ah. <laughs> whenever it happened, it was worth happening. <laughs> and maybe, like God knowing and understanding and seeing all of humanity and what the people would be like, all the people made in his image, all his children. I'm only using his because now I'm just talking about a specific like biblical understanding, right? Maybe in all of that, God saw all the people and he saw that some people would be terrible to other people, other people that were his children, all made in his image. But some people would be terrible to other people because they were different. You know? And then in those differences, he looked at the whole of history and thought to himself, okay, I need to do something about this. But rather than working on a linear scale, rather than waiting for a thing to happen to react to a thing, for a thing to happen to react to a thing, maybe God was just like, I'll do it whenever. Maybe I'll go to the beginning. Maybe God saw that there were going to be 
gay people and how abused and mistreated they would be by other people that claimed to be moving in his name, right? So maybe at the very beginning of time, God said, okay, if this is how humanity works, thinks, if this is how humanity will move, then I'll have to do something about it. And maybe God saw that it would be men, mostly men who were the most violent, who were the most, you know, combative against these people that were different. And so then at the beginning of time, God decided, fine, if you're gonna be like this, I'm gonna put the G spot in the ass. <laughs> Like if, like, if you're gonna be a dick, you don't get the good stuff. I told you it was a walk. I, lo I, I love talking about this with people because, you know, the whole joke is too long, but... <laughs> While I'm telling it, people are like, is this how a cult starts? <laughs> you all are so amazing. Thank you so much for coming out.